Welcome to how to make your presentation really great. And if your next presentation can be improved with the techniques you're about to hear, then you can repeat with every other presentation, whether your audience is five, 50 or 500. In case we haven't had the pleasure of meeting, I'm Patricia Fripp. I'm a keynote speaker, executive speech coach and sales presentation skills trainer, as well as being an online learning expert. If you put it this way, my job is to help individuals and companies have a competitive edge by improving their conversations and presentations. This is part of the Patricia Fripp 20 minute webinar series. Now that does not mean we'll take 20 minutes, but we absolutely guarantee that it won't be longer than 20 minutes. And I will take your specific questions in email afterwards so that this can be an action packed and fairly short amount of time. So let's bring up the PowerPoint and get ready for action. It does not matter if you are a novice or advanced speaker. Some of my coaching clients, in fact, charge $25,000 before they come to me. It's a matter of taking what you now do and take a closer look at some frequently overlooked or little known techniques and suggestions. Understand the long-term impact of every conversation and presentation you have, whether it's in the sales role or as a speaker. We have to speak to be remembered and repeated. And the techniques that you are about to hear will help your message be more memorable. And this is important because if you do want a competitive edge, if you do want to make more money, the more effective your conversations and presentations are, the more it will pay off long term. Invest in the education of being a better presenter and it will be a great investment. See, when you speak well and you are remembered and repeated, you in fact are talking to the audience of your audience. I certainly hope you will talk to some of your friends and colleagues about what you learned in this webinar. That means you, you are taking my words, my suggestions and repeating them to your colleagues. In that case, I am speaking for your audience to the audience of your audience. I was frequent I, I was recently asked what was the number one secret of good of a good presentation and i was saying well there's no one secret and then it hit me and i said although there might not be one secret if there were it would be that your subject is of interest to your audience and you might be thinking well how can i guarantee that some circumstances you go into are more user friendly to you. The real key is we have to speak as an audience advocate. We look at our subject from the point of view of the audience's point of view, not just ours. And we do that by understanding what everyone's more interested in themselves than they are in us. Watch the I versus you balance. This also works when you're writing. For example, if you're writing a quick email, now look at it and see all the eyes that you use. Could you perhaps restructure the sentence or change it to be more you focused? Rather than I am sending you the information you requested, change it around to you will be receiving the information you requested. Hope that makes help, make, makes, is, is helpful. I suggest based on the conversations and presentations you give, come up with a list of you focused phrases, such as in your experience, how often have you, uh, 
what you will be learning, what you will hear, the, the challenges you mentioned, you focused phrases that are in your back pocket. Now, what I mean by your back pocket is they are prepared. They are there. They're in the back of your mind that you pull them forward whenever you need them. The next good to great techniques, because I know you're probably a good speaker. However, what makes it great is these tiny differences that most people aren't aware of. And this is time is a setup phrase. Be aware of your punch word or impact word. Now, in the visual that is behind the, the screen that is behind me in this photograph of me delivering a presentation, that is a perfect example of this, is taking what one of my clients was actually saying now and rewriting. In this circumstance, he said, we are here to celebrate the accomplishments of 2040. Now, time, 98% of the time, any unit of time in 2014, today, in the next quarter, that is a setup phrase and comes at the beginning of a sentence. So, for example, in this case, I used, I fripped it. To, we are here to celebrate your 2014 accomplishments. In other words, that time, I use time as an adjective. Then he was saying, this is the focus for the next two days. I suggested you turn that around. For the next two days, this will be our focus. In comedy, there's the setup phrase and the punch word or punch phrase. That's what triggers the law. Take my wife, please. And if a comedian makes any comments after the punch word or punch phrase, it minimizes the laughter. In business communication, I consider the setup phrase and the impact phrase. And what is most important in your sentence comes at the end of the sentence. And remember, time is really, really the, the impact phrase at the end. The next idea in your good to great techniques is to speak in shorter sentences, one idea at a time. Consider this. The spoken word is for the rhythm. You have to breathe. You have to give the audience time to digest what you say. And I don't know about your audiences, but as I work in Silicon Valley a lot, the last conference I was coaching engineers for, 71 countries were represented. And even though most of the professionals and the customers in attendance did speak business English, it was not their first language. So when we speak in shorter sentences, just one idea at a time, a pause, because as counterintuitive as it might seem, you actually connect more with your audience in the silence when people have time to digest what they just heard. That will add to their attention because remember, we want to speak to be remembered and repeated this is very important in presentations and certainly in reporting to senior management, in giving instructions to your team or in a sales presentation. So you have your shorter sentences, one idea a sentence, and then understand the concept of $10 words, $30 sentences, and $100 phrases. Now that's actually two ideas. One of my friends who's an acting coach said, Patricia, you have you have $30 for a sentence and words are $10 each. And you're probably like me. I said, but most sentences have more than three words. And she said, that's the point, Patricia. 
not every word is of equal importance and we have to do the work for the audience. So I'm not suggesting you script out an entire presentation, but I am script suggesting you script out the opening, the close, and any really important lines, your repetitive phrases, your soundbite statements. These would be considered your $100 phrases. This would be a phrase that you would use throughout the presentation, almost like the chorus of a song. And when you were doing the review of your ideas and challenging us what we want to learn, then these would be the lines that you would repeat. So looking at the idea of $10 words, now I'm going to exaggerate. This is a line that, that I would use in a leadership presentation. I'm going to exaggerate the $10 words. General Eisenhower said, Leadership is the ability to decide what has to be done and then get people to want to do it. So can you see the emphasis? So if you had a script of these important lines or your opening, underline the $10 words. In rehearsal, you exaggerate it. And in once you get into your body, you will not do anything that makes you feel like an idiot. That's why you exaggerate in the rehearsal and eat in, in real life with your audience or your prospects or your senior management or your team, whoever your audience is, the vocal variety and the emphasis will be built into it. Another good part about this is if you're going to change the emphasis of a word, you have to pause just to be able to get different air and breath in, which will add more openness and variety and enjoyment and retention of your message. So not every word is of equal importance. And the $100 phrases are the really important lines that you're going to repeat. For example, with one of my speeches, the opening story, the punchline is, life is a series of sales situations. And the answer is no, if you don't ask. Now, later in the presentation, I'll say, life is a series of sales situations, and the real sale is after the sale. Then later in the presentation, Life is a series of sales situations, and the real sale is to yourself. So you can see how I'm having this as a $100 phrase, a repetitive refrain. Hope that helps. We all now, in business communication and speaking, stories have power. And we want to help our audiences remember by seeing what we are saying. And there's a certain format to do this, very much like the structure of the sentences. Remember, time is a setup phrase. So always, when did your story happen? In 1946, when I was five years old. Last summer, I went to Italy. All right, these are setup phrases. So when, where were you, who is in the story, and give them a backstory, just so I understand who this character is and what happened. If you present your information this way, it will be easier for your audience to see what you are saying. And the next part of that is when you're telling a story, get into the scene late. Now, this comes from one of my friends, Michael Hage, who is a story consultant in Hollywood. And that is his technique, get into the scene late. So, for example, if you're telling a story, it might start with, Mary had a problem. Now, what are you thinking? Who's Mary? What's her problem? She was a senior vice president of HR. For the past 20 years, she had worked with Fortune 100 companies. 
So can you see, I'm getting you in the scene, I'm giving you Mary's backstory. So you now know, without me having to tell you, if Mary has a problem after 20 years with Fortune 100 companies, this is a big problem. This is another way, and this came from a coaching camp I was doing with Michael, and somebody got up to tell a story. And he was talking about, this was uh, in Vietnam, he was part of the press, and they flew over, it was, they, so a lot of the time was spent with the backstory, in the military, flying over, this we were reporting, we went to this village, and there we were having dinner. And Michael Haig said, no, take us right to the restaurant. We were eating our steaks, the young boy was watching through the window. Take us to the scene. That in fact cut three minutes out of the setup of the story. Because get me into the scene and it's amazing. You can do a lot of the setup that is needed once you're there. Try it with your own stories and examples. Now we want to transport the audience to a different time and place. And you do this with opening lines like imagine. Now this is where you're going to take them into the future. Imagine it is December 2020. Or you might take them to the past. Come back with me to when I was five years old. So that is taking them forward, taking them back. You are telling your own personal story. However, you are bringing them into your story. Now, you can transport the audience into a situation they might be in. If I were to ask you, how often have you stood up to deliver a presentation and forgotten what to say? Now, in that case, you are taking them into the last scene that that happened. Now, if you say, I wish you could have been there, I know you are taking me to a scene. It has to be a happy scene. It has to be somewhere they would want to go. Now, perhaps you're going to transport the audience to a time in your life by saying, it was the most exhilarating moment of my life. So these are opening lines, and I would challenge you to take these lines and just start and see what would follow. The next way you are going to make your presentation break is to add specificity. Are you guilty of the unconscious goof that ruins your credibility? Avoid empty language. I am famous in the speaking world for making my clients slap their hands when they say stuff. That is debris. That is rubbish. And if you have finished a sentence, stop talking. It's amazing how many people make a comment and then say, and stuff. No, stuff is only good when you're talking about what you do for the turkey at Thanksgiving and Christmas. Specificity builds your credibility. The most frequently asked questions of my clients is, if it weren't a thing, what would it be? In conversation, there's no agenda, so it is normal you might be non-specific. However, in a presentation, you're thinking in advance. One engineer I was working with said, there are two things that people love about you, which it brings us into the other. You say, what's non-specific about people? Well, what people? So how we changed his sentence, I said, if they weren't things, what would they be? Innovative upgrades. There are billions of people in the world what people love your innovative upgrades. And he said, systems engineers. Can you see the importance of specific language makes your sentence sound more valuable? And tons. Unless it has a weight, it's not tons. Oh, Patricia, I went to your seminar and got tons of ideas. No, you didn't. You had dozens of actionable items. 
remove empty words. You will not improve what you're not aware of. So I recommend you record your conversations and listen and see out there, kind of, sort of. And if you want to be taken seriously and be clear, concise and credible, don't kind of or sort of anything. You do or you don't. The choice of your words can very much communicate feelings and images. For example, in one, one attorney, I was helping with a presentation on modern day slavery. I get all the motivational subjects. And she said he promised her many things. I said, no, he didn't. He promised her a life of romance and adventure. Those words give you more information and emotions and feeling and help you understand why a young woman would leave the safety of home. It gives you more information than the time it takes to say. So, of course, you have learned to look at your presentation to make it great by taking what might be good and making it better, taking a closer look. And how are you going to perfect your presentation? Of course, rehearse, 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 and rehearse for people. It's easier that way. By now, I hope you realize that perhaps there's more to speaking to make your presentation really good than perhaps you thought. And yes, to answer your unspoken questions, of course, we have ways to help you. And if your goal is to increase your impact and your income, you must increase the quality of presentation skills. And we recommend that you try FRIP of VT, which is FRIP Virtual Training, the absolute best information on presentations and being persuasive that I've learned in the last 35 plus years of studying the subject. So go take a free trial on openings and stories and sales. And if you would like to have a personal demo, ask a question about what you've heard. We're about to give you my email address. But certainly, if you would like to be part of the Frip VT community and become the speaker you're capable of becoming as part of being part of our webinar community, we'll even give you a 20% discount with the with Frip as the coupon code. And if you have a question for me, you'd like a personal demo please email me at pfrit at frit.com and we will get back to you right away. And remember, if you want a competitive edge, you have to focus on improving your conversations and presentations. Look forward to hearing from you.